This is the 15th video of our lecture series optimization using Excel and in this video we are going to discuss how to solve a maximum flow problem also known as max flow problem using the optimization techniques and the implementation will be done using Excel as always. Now I have borrowed this slide from our video number 13 where we discussed about the network flow models in general. So let us recall that the maximum flow problem we have one source node and another sync node also like shortest path problem but the situation is very different. So in case of maximum flow problem our objective is to maximize the flow that can occur from the source node to the sync node. Here we are not uh, trying to find any particular single path here. Our objective is the total flow that has to be maximized. So there can be one path from 1 to 9, there can be multiple paths from 1 to 9, that is not the matter of concern. The concern is whether the flow is maximum or not. Okay. And if you look at this diagram, you find these numbers on the uh, edges. So what are these numbers? These are the flow capacities. For, for example, uh, any flow that is occurring from node 2 to node 6 is limited by the upper bound of 5. So that means the flow should not be exceeding 5. It should be less than or equal to 5. And about the method, uh, we have already discussed that there can be several methods. Heuristic based method, here is the Ford Fulkerson algorithm, but this is not uh, discussed here. I, we have not discussed this here because we are discussing optimization techniques and only the linear programming formulation and implementation will be discussed in this video. So let us now see how to formulate the problem using linear programming approach. So in order to formulate, let us first define the decision variable. So xij is the decision variables. What does the xij stand for? It stands for the flow that is occurring from node i to node j. And so what is the objective? Note that the objective is to find the fl maximum flow that is occurring to node 9. So you can see from node 5, from node 7 and from node 8, the flows are coming to node 9. So what could be the total flow? Total flow is sum of that x59 plus x79 and x89. So if you uh, do the summation that will give you the total flow that is coming to node 9 and we are going to maximize the same. Another alternative approach is start with the source node and add up the flows that is occurring from the source node. So 1, 2, one flow is 1, 2, next one is 1, 3 and third one is 1, 4. If you add these three, this will give the total flow that is coming out of source node. So since uh, the flow is not coming anywhere outside the network, so total flow generating from uh, source node should also be equal to the total flow terminating to the sync node and therefore these two sums like x12, x13 and x4, x14 should be always equal to x59 plus x79 and x89. So either you will write the objective function in the first uh, using the first format or I, otherwise you can use the second alternative format also. So both are equally correct. So let us now come to the constraint parts. So there are three types of constraints. First one is the capacity constraint. This type of these constraint are constraints are the capacity constraints. What, what are the capacity constraints? They are simply the uh, upper bound or limits of the xij constraints. So for example, your x12, this is limited by the quantity 10 and therefore the constraint is x12 is less than or equal to 10. Similarly, you can note any any other edges here. Like for example, x59, the upper bound is 10 and so you can see here 
x59 is less than or equal to 10 so this is written for all the all the constraints uh, sorry all the edges here and so the next one is your uh, transshipment constraints what are the transshipment constraints we have already discussed the for any transshipment nodes this type of constraint will hold good so for example flow in minus flow out should always be equal to zero so let us now examine just two nodes this is for the uh, node number three and uh, this is for node number seven so let us see what is flow into node number three so x one three this is one flow that is coming inside node three and what is the what else x two three this is also coming to node three so this is the flow in and what is the flow out x34 x35 and x37 so you can check here x34 is coming out of uh, node 3 x35 also this is coming out of node 3 and x37 also this is coming out of node 3 so if you add them this is the flow out so flow in minus flow out should be equal to 0 you can verify it for node 7 also so for example for node 7 x27 is incoming x37 is also incoming x57 is also going to node 7 and x67 is also going to node 7 so therefore if you add four of them it will give you the total flow in to node 7 and what is flow out you can check here x78 is going out of node 7 and x79 also this is also going out of node 7 so x78 and x79 these two are uh, flow out from node 7 so flow in minus flow out is equal to 0 so I have written this for uh, 7 transshipment constraint because we have you can see starting from node 2, node 3, node 4, node 5, node 7 node 6 and node 8 these are all intermittent node and are transshipment nodes and so seven transshipment constraints are there and finally uh, there is one non-negativity constraint you must note here that unlike the shortest path problem which is a binary integer problem this is a purely linear program and hence we will use the greater than equal to zero constraint for all xij so this is all about the algebraic formulation let us now go to the excel sheet and try to solve this problem in excel solver so this is now your excel solver setup so first of all you note that i have written all the edges in the form of a list from to list and the key to write this list i have already discussed in the shortest path problem that you start from just one node and do not leave that node until all the edges that is coming out of that node is completed so for example i have started from node 1 and then i have included node uh, 2 3 and 4 because we have three edges coming out of node 1 and so once i have completed these three then i have moved on to node 2 and you can check that from node 2 we have again three edges 3 6 and 7 2 3 2 6 and 2 7 when these are written then only I have moved on to node 3 and in this way I have written all the edges here so if you uh, follow this method you will be sure that you have not missed out any edges from the network and if you check here there are 17 uh, such edges here and 17 entries are there you will find 17 routes also in the network diagram and what is the third column third column is the your xij column that is the decision variable that will be populated once you click the solver and uh, these are the capacities i have noted down the capacities from the network diagram we have to type it then in this g column i have written the node numbers that is we have nine nodes so from one to nine then here we will do our calculations so flow we, we will calculate the flow out flow in and then perform out minus in 
So what is flow out? In order to calculate the flow out, we will use the sum if function. Sum if start the range. What is the range? Range is since uh, please understand that if we have a node from which some flow is occurring, so that is the flow out. Flow out can come from a from node. So therefore, this range is this one from range. And once you have selected this before doing anything else, please make sure that you have pressed F4. If you press F4, then it will be fixed. Dollar signs will come up and this range will be fixed. So when we will copy downwards, the range will not change. And then the next criteria, next argument is the criteria. What is the criteria? Criteria is basically the node number which is given in column G. So enter G2 here. And then the sum range. The sum of what? Which range? The sum of which range? That is the sum of the decision variables. So this is the range. Again, you have to press F4 here in order to make it fixed and then close the bracket enter. So this is giving you the flow out. And what is flow in? Again, use the sum if function, almost the same function. But in this case, we have to use the two node as the first range because we are uh, trying to find the flow in. So select the two node, again fix it using F4, then put a comma, then what is the criteria? Criteria is node number, so type G2 and then the sum range is again the decision variable, XIJ range. So again fix it, fix it using F4 and then close the bracket, enter. So in this way you drag this downward. So this is the flow out and flow in from all the nodes. Now you perform out minus in. This is the net flow. Out minus in. Do it for all the nodes. And then these are your transshipment nodes 2 to 8. The flow out minus flow in should be equal to 0. So I have written 0 in the right hand side. So this completes the uh, formulation in Excel. Now go to the solver. In the solver, what is your maximum? What is your objective function? The objective function is the net flow of node 1. That is, what is the flow out? Uh, note here carefully, there is no flow in actually in node 1. So flow out minus flow in for node 1 is basically the flow out only for node 1. So that has to be maximized. You select that and maximize it. And what is the decision variables? Decision variables is this one. Xij and in the constraints. What are the constraints? First constraint is your capacity constraint. So all your Xij values will be less than or equal to the capacity is given here. Add that. And other one is the net flow constraint. So for the transshipment nodes, these are the net flow and this should be equal to the right hand side, which is equal to zero. So add this also. And uh, you must select the simplex LV solver here and click on solve. So let us see what happens. So this is the solution. These are the flow flows that are occurring in different ages. So for example, from one to two, you will have 10 units of flow from 2 to 6 you will have 5 units of flow in this way and what is the total flow out of node 1 it is 23 and the total flow that is terminating to node 9 is also 23 so this is one check um, you make you can do before concluding anything because if your formulation is correct then these two numbers will match otherwise they they will not match so now see that they have matched both are 23, so our formulation is correct. And what is the answer? The answer is from node 1 to node 9, we can have a maximum flow of 23 units. Uh, no more than 23 units of flow are possible in this network. And the individual flow that is occurring in each node is given in this decision variable cells. 
So that is all about the maximum flow problem. This is how a maximum flow problem will be solved using Excel solver. Hope you have understood this well. In the next video, we will discuss the, another type of uh, network flow problem, which is the minimal spanning tree network problem. So until then, goodbye and thank you very much.